Kamusta po mga kapatid? Pagpapala, greetings, besos, hugs, hugs ang dinadala ng inyong lingkod at dawa ang kagalakan ng Panginoon ang pumuno at pumapaw sa ating mga puso. Bakit maraming verses ginagamit as weapons of cruel destruction? Why is there such rampant and indiscriminate use of verses to hurt people, to judge others, to set people apart, to divide? Bakit ang mga verses na imbes na dapat ay pangbigay ng comfort, pang haplos, pang himas para magbigay ng ginawa ay nagiging bato na lumilipad, tumatama, nakakasakit. Ang pag-aaral natin ngayon, pinamagata natin all scripture, talagang lahat. How to read, interpret, and apply the letters in the Christian scriptures called the New Testament. 2 Timothy 3, 14-16 But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, Because you know those from whom you learned it, and how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. At ang verses natin ngayon na talagang bibigyan ng DNA, itong verse 16, yung laging pag may gusto kang i-judge, pag may gusto kang batuhin, pag may gusto kang pakialaman, pag mayroon kang gustong panghimasukan, pag may gusto kang i-demonize, sasabihin mo, eto yung verse na gagamitin ko laban sa'yo, eto yung verse na gagamitin ko para ka i-judge, tapos may kasunod, kasi all scripture is god breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. At ang pating pag-aaralan ngayon, how this verse 16 is misused, and abused by many. Verse 14, As for you, Timothy, kasi si Timothy ang kinakausap, so a-analyze natin yung bawat bahagi ng sinabing ito. Continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of because you know from whom you have learned it. Meaning, it was from Paul that you have learned it. Sa aking galing yan, anak, katuroan ko yan, kaya ituloy mo kung anong itinuro ko sa'yo. In other words, Paul was saying, continue in what you have learned from me in how to read and interpret scripture because you know me, your teacher. And how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures. Meaning, pag Holy Scriptures, this is the Jewish Scriptures or JS or the Christian Old Testament or the OT. Ginawa natin almost equal kasi hindi naman talaga equal ang Jewish scriptures at ang Christian Old Testament na nasa Christian Bible. The Old Testament is not one-to-one -one correspondent equal to the Jewish scriptures. There are differences in text, content, and books. And there are differences in translations, even in punctuation, canonical order, and emphasis. And remember, pag sinasabi dito sa letter kay Timothy na Holy Scriptures, hindi New Testament ang tinutukoy dito kasi hindi pa sulat mo ng New Testament, hindi pa compiled, wala pang Holy Scriptures na New Testament. So ang tinutukoy ay yung Holy Scriptures of the Jews, the Old Testament known by Christians. But remember, the Old Testament is not in one-to-one -one correspondence with, is not equal to the Jewish Scriptures. May mga pagkakaiba. So sa pagpapatuloy, the Holy Scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. Ngayon, pinaghalo na nitong si Paul yung Holy Scriptures at si Jesus Christ. And how do you become wise for salvation through Jesus Christ? It's no longer through the law, not by works. In other words, not by way of the Jewish Scripture. Sinala na. Tsaka pa lang pumunta si Paul sa sabi niyang, All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. And because now, ikinumbine ni Paul ang pagbasa sa scriptures sa faith in Jesus, dapat ang pagbasa na ngayon sa all scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, eh merong consideration. When? 
and if able to make you wise for salvation from the law through faith in Christ Jesus. Salvation is not only from hell. Salvation also from the law. Because Jesus came to destroy the law. Because it was the law that was making life difficult and miserable. And it is the law na nagpapahamak sa mga tao. So salvation by Jesus is not only salvation from hell in eternity, but also salvation from the law. Kasi yung law ang nagbibigay ng hell-like life sa mga tao. So, useful yan. All scripture is useful when and if interpreted by Jesus. When and if filtered through Jesus. When and if it sets free from the law, from condemnation, and from guilt. When and if it is loving in application. So, hindi ka na ngayon pwedeng pumikap ng basta any verse from the Old Testament at lalong-lalo sa New Testament na hindi mo papadaanin kay Jesus. Apply ka lang ng apply. No. Because binasa na ni Paul dito sa ating scripture reading ang kahulugan ng authority, ang kahulugan ng inspiration, ng pagiging God-breed, ng pagiging makabuluhan ng scripture. Ito ay kung dadaan through faith in Jesus. Kung dadaan sa Jesus filter. Matthew 22, 37-40 Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. So kung paano sinasabi ni Paul na ang pagbasa sa Holy Scriptures ay dapat dumadaan kay Jesus, sinabi din ni Jesus dito sa Matthew 22, ang lahat ng pagbasa dapat sa Scripture ay dadaan sa Kanya. Kasi, sabi niya, itong itinuturo ko sa inyong commandment, yung love, ito ang pinakakahulugan ng lahat ng law and the prophets. In other words, the correct way to read and apply the law and the prophets is only through the filter of love. So, pag may mga commandment, may mga laws noon na hindi na loving ang application, hindi na papasa kay Jesus, dapat yan, nasa history na lang, nasa shelf, Reference na lang, pero hindi mo na paiiralin because all the law and the prophets hang on the commandments to love God and to love others. Pag unloving ang application, ang dating, ang interpretation, huwag na, tapos na yun because the law and the prophets were only up to John the baptizer. So, all the law and the prophets should be understood, interpreted, and applied according to these two commandments, love God, and love your fellow humans. The Jewish scriptures that we call Old Testament is by the Jews. It is for the Jews. Sinulat nila yan para sa kanila. Leviticus 16.34 This is to be a lasting ordinance for you. Sinong kausap? E di yung mga ancient Israelites. Atonement is to be made once a year for all the sins of the Israelites. So ang tanong, Israelite ka ba? Hindi. E di hindi ikaw ang kausap sa Leviticus. Nakikibasa ka lang. May mapupulot ka dyan. May universal truth dyan. Pag dumaan sa Jesus filter, sa filter of love. Pero pag hindi dadaan, pag unloving, pagka cruel, discriminatory, pagka malupit, hindi na yan para sa atin. Ibinigay yan sa ancient Israelites. Deuteronomy 5.6 I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. So, sinong kausap sa Deuteronomy? Ancient Israelites ang kausap. Ancient Israelite ka ba? Kung hindi, eh di nakikibasa ka lang. Huwag mong lulunin lahat, huwag mong i-apply lahat sa buhay mo, huwag mong i-impose sa iyong kapwa na hindi naman sila ancient Israelites. Deuteronomy 4.1 Now Israel, hear the decrees and laws I am about to teach you. Follow them so that you may live and go in and take possession of the land that the Lord, the God of your ancestors, is giving you. So, ikaw ba ang kausap sa Deuteronomy? Hindi ba ancient Israel? Dapat malinaw nga yan sa atin. Ano? Bakit ba? Kailan nga? Ba't bakit umuso? Na pag ginabasa mo yung mga ancient scriptures sa mga Jews, akala mo ikaw ang kausap? Bakit? Nung no, kinausap ba si Noah na pinapagawa ng sasakyang dagat? Dapat gagawa ka rin. Eh, nakikibasa ka lang. 
nung ipinapabasag ba kay Gideon ng mga Diyos-Diyosan sa lugar nila? Basag ka rin ang basag na yun ng mga Diyos-Diyosan sa paligid mo. Ikaw ba si Gideon? Ikaw ba yung kausap? Dapat magkalinawan. Para yan sa kanila. Nakikibasa lang tayo. Be wise and careful sa pag-apply sa sarili at sa kapwa because chances are you'll be cruel to yourself and to others. Kasi napaka-cruel ng marami nila mga batas noon. Remember, noong unang panahon pa yan, iba ang paraan, iba ang kultura. Ang mga teachings were culture-specific, context-specific. Meron dapat na mga kondisyones na ma mangyari, makamit, para mo i-apply yun. Without that context, you will be out of context and you will be misapplying and abusing Scripture. Ezekiel 13, 4-6 Israel, your prophets are false prophets. Your prophets say they have seen visions, but everything they said would happen is a lie. They claim to speak for the Lord, but the Lord did not send them. So you see, even yung mga prophecies ng ancient Israel, mga prophets nila, ang daming fake. As sinasabi na mismo dito sa scripture na maraming fake. So dapat maingat tayo, hindi lulun ang lulun. Mark 7, 7 to 8. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. You have let go of the commands of God and are holding on to human traditions. Yan ang sabi ni Jesus. Yan ang reklamo ng Diyos laban sa mga Israelites. Marami nilang religious leaders. Wala daw kwenta ka nilang pagsamba. Kasi ang mga kabatas nila, imbento lang ng tao. Kaugalian, tradisyon ng tao ang kanilang pinapahalagahan. Hindi yung tunay na kabaitan ng Diyos. Whatever side, kung ano man ang ating tinitingnan dyan, saan man tayo nasa side of scholarship, test by the Jesus filter. Test every scholar, scholarship, doctrine. Test every theology. Test every theologian. Test every teaching in the Bible kung yon ay papasa sa Jesus filter. Kasi, kaya nga ipinadala si Jesus is to destroy the law. To set people free from the law. Tapos i-apply mo ngayon na parang ikaw yung sinabihan ng unang panahon. Wala ka sa lugar. Parang hindi nangyari si Jesus. Binabaliwala natin ang sakripisyo ni Jesus. Kung patuloy lang natin na lululunin lahat ang mga katuroan na hindi pinapadaan sa salaan ni Jesus. John 14.6 Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So talagang kay Jesus dadaan. Kay Jesus dapat magpasala ang lahat, ang lahat ng katuroan, ang lahat ng ideya, ang lahat ng papaniwalaan. Nothing, no teaching should come to you except through me. That is what Jesus was really saying. So salain lahat sa Jesus filter. Alam na ng marami ko na yung Jesus filter na yan. Yung lahat ng katuroan sa Biblia, before Jesus, during Jesus, and after Jesus, and during the 2,000 years of the past history of the church, lahat ng katuroan, lahat ng doktrina, lahat ng practice, salain kay Jesus. At kung si Jesus ay salaan, imagine natin na ang korte ng butas ng salaan niya ay korte ng puso dahil siya maibigin, yung mga katuroan lang na korte ng puso din, kasayas ng puso niya, ang lulusot, yun ang pwede nating hanggang ngayon ay sundin, ituro, ipangaral, at ipamuhay. Pero siyempre, maraming hindi lulusot, katulad ng pagbato hanggang mamatay sa isang babaeng nahuli sa kanyang ginagawang kasalanan, yung pagbato hanggang mamatay dahil may bata na nangangahoy during Sabbath, yung mga katuroan na hindi ka pwede kumain ito, nito, nito, nyan, samantalang nilinis na ni Jesus ang lahat ng pagkain. Yung mga katuroan na nagagalit pag kami ginagawa kapag Sabat, samantalang sinabi ni Jesus, Sabat was made for man, not man for the Sabat. Yung lahat ng katuroan na hindi nalalampas sa salaan ni Jesus, ilagay na natin sa history. Tapos na yun. Jesus came to destroy the law. John the Baptist is the marker. Because all the law and the prophets were only up to John. Pagkatapos nun, wala na. Or, kung meron man, yun lang lalampas kay Jesus. Kasi si John ang tagahawi ng daan ni Jesus. Hindi naman si John ang salaan, kundi si Jesus. Mahalaga yung mga katuroan na yan ng unang panahon na reference para malaman natin for history, for information. Pero hindi na siya papairalin ngayon kasi nga nangyari na si Jesus setting us free from all the unloving and the cruel aspects of the law. Maraming kinancel si Jesus 
na Jewish teachings. Kinancel or minodify, pinabait, inadapt, inadjust tulad sa Sabbath, sa diet, social structure, women, etc., etc. Romans 7, 6-8 But the law no longer rules over us. Now we can serve God in a new way by obeying His Spirit and not in the old way by obeying the written law. In other words, pag may written law, sinasabi, batuhin mo siya, itiwalag mo siya, tanggalin mo siya, itrato mo siya as an unbeliever, itakwil mo siya, yun ang sinasabi ng law. Pero sabi, we can serve God in a new way by obeying His Spirit. Makinig ka sa sinasabi ng Spirit sa iyong puso. Sinasabi ng puso mo, at sinasabi sa puso mo, wag, kawawa, mahalin, turuan, akayin, gamutin, tanggapin, linisin, pakabanalin, ibigin, yakapin, yan ang sinasabi sa'yo ng spirit. So pag may sinasabi ang spirit sa'yo na babait, ang pakinggan mo yung spirit, hindi sinasabi ng verse na cruel. Yun ang kahulugan nun. Ulitin natin, Romans 7, 6-8. But the law no longer rules over us. Now we can serve God in a new way by obeying His Spirit and not in the old way by obeying the written law. And yet up to now, ang dami-dami nating unkindness, cruelty sa kapwa because we are obeying the written law at hindi tayo nakikinig sa ujok ng Spirit, the Spirit of love. Romans 6.14 For sin shall no longer be your master. Because you are not under the law, but under grace. Isang bagay lang maintindihan ng mga Jesus followers yan, yung law at yung grace. Anong papairalin ko? Yung baet na idinidikta ng Spirito? O yung lupit na sinasabi ng written verses, dapat ang pipiliin mo yung Spirit? Now we can serve God in a new way by obeying His Spirit. Tulad ng si Pedro, pinapakain ng Diyos sa kanyang vision na mga bawal na mga kaining mga pagkain. Sabi nung voice, Arise, Peter, kill and eat. And Peter answered, Lord, I cannot eat an unclean thing. At sabi ng Diyos, Don't dare to call unclean what I call clean. So yon Kasi may written verses si Peter na pinagpawasihan na hindi niya pwedeng kainin ng ganito at ganung hayop. Eh just ang nagsasabing, pwede ba nang kainin? Yun ang udyok ng spirito. Nakakapagpalaya, nakakapagpabait, dung ka makinig. Hindi doon sa nakakapagpasungit na written verses kung magkakontra yung dalawa. Luke 16, 16 to 17 Until the time of John the Baptist, people had to obey the law of Moses and the books of the prophets. So kita nyo, until the time of John the Baptist. Nung dumating siya, hindi na kailangang sundin ang law of Moses and the book of prophets na kontra kay Jesus. Yung sangayon kay Jesus, tuloy, sundin, ipamuhay kasi dadaan sa Jesus filter. Pero yung mga kontra na, malupit na, hindi na mabuti, discriminatory ng pupwera, hindi na yon kailangang sundin. Ang linaw-linaw naman. But since God's kingdom has been preached, everyone is trying hard to get in. So dati daw ang mga tao kadara pa sa pag-obey sa law of Moses and the book of the prophets pero pagdating ni John ipinreach sa si Jesus at nagpreach na nga si Jesus ang lahat ngayon ay pumapasok na sa kaharian ng Diyos not through the law not through the Moses and the uh, prophets but through God's love in Jesus Verse 17 Heaven and earth will disappear before the smallest letter of the law does O sabi ni Bawai naman pala eh, hindi naman pala mawawala yung letter of the law. Hindi yun yung letter of the law of Moses. The letter of the law of love. The law given by Jesus, love. The command be given by Jesus, love. So ang hindi na magdi-disappear dito yung letter of the law of love, not the letter of the law of Moses. Kasi kung hindi naman pala magdi-disappear, sabi sa verse 17, edi kinukontra niya yung verse 16 na hanggang kay John lang yung law of Moses and the prophets. Tapos biglang sasabihin sa 17, wala magdi-disappear. No, ibang law na ang tinata, tinutukoy John. Yung law of love na. The law and the prophets were effective only until John the baptizer cleared the way for Jesus, meaning cleared the way for love, for grace. 
So yung the law of love, yun ang hindi mawawalang letra till even heaven and earth will disappear. It is not a reference to the law of Moses. Kasi ang lino nung asa verse 16 na wala na yun eh. Now, there is the true and only way to God, Jesus, Jesusness. Yung verse 17, Heaven and earth will disappear before the smallest letter of the law does. The smallest letter of the new law ang tinutukoy, the law of love, the law of Jesusness, not the law of Moses. Kasi nga, Jesus came not to destroy the law. Tapos ang sabihin mo pa na, Heaven and earth will pass away and every for every letter of the law of Moses will disappear. No, it's not about the law of Moses, but the law of Jesus, the law of love. And Jesus sets free. John 8, 36. So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Truth sets free. John 8, 32. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. The reading interpretation and application of scripture, meaning the Old Testament and even the New Testament and all post-Jesus church doctrines in the last 2,000 years are to pass the Jesus filter. Romans 12.2 Do not conform to the pattern of this world and may I add to the old religious thought but be transformed by the renewing of your mind and may I add by and through Jesusness, then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Ibig sabihin, God's will expressed through and by Jesus, not by the law. So identify teachings as local for their place, time, and context. Pag sinasabi yung all scripture is God breathed, tingnan mo naman muna ako yung sinasabi ng scripture na gusto mong i-quote, gusto mong i-apply, eh pang kanila lang, kung hindi ka kasali, eh huwag ka sumali. Pero kung may universal truth, meron naman yung universal truth. Kung minsan, papag sinala mo kay Jesus, applicable pa today, eh di yun ang gamitin mo. God breathed pa rin yun. Hebrews 8.10 This is the covenant I will establish with the people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put the laws in their minds and write them on their hearts. So, ililipat daw ng Diyos sa kanilang puso at sa kanilang isip yung mga lo tatanggalin sa bato, sa pagkakauka sa bato. Ibig sabihin, hindi ko mo carved in stone forever na yan. At yung heart nga ng tao gagawin yung flesh, hindi stone para bumait, para magkaroon ng Jesusness talaga. What's an example of contextualization? Halimbawa, nabasa mo sa New Testament, 1 Corinthians 14.34 Women should remain silent in the churches. They are not allowed to speak, but must be in submission as the law says. O ngayon, gusto mo lahat ng babae sa buong mundo, tahimik, kahit sa ang church, kahit sa ang culture? No. Una, basahin mo, para kanino ba yung letter? Di ba, letter to the Corinthians? Tanong, Corinthian ka ba? Ikaw ba yung taong sinulatan na buhay ka ba noong unang panahon? Kayo ba yung tinutukoy? E yung church yun sa lugar nyo, sa barangay nyo, kayo ba yung sinulatan? No, di ba? So, hindi para sa inyo ang letter na ito, ito'y para sa kanila, tayo'y nakikibasa lang. So, yung mga culture-specific instructions, hindi universal truth, church administration, yung may mga bagay sa kanilang specific social situation, kasi kilala sila ni Paul, so siguro may mga babae dito sobrang dakdak, sobrang mga pakialamera, mga intrigera. So sinabi ni Paul, ang mga babae niya na pinagbabawala ko magsalita kasi intrigera, magulo sila, laging nagkakahati-hati ang mga tao kung nagsasalita sila. Pero tinutukoy yung mga yun. Hindi lahat ng babae sa lahat ng church sa lahat ng panahon. Ito sinasabi natin na kailangan mag-contextualize ka. At sasalain mo kay Jesus, di ba? Sino ba ang unang nagturo na si Jesus ay bumangon mula sa kamatayan, na siya ay nabuhay na muli? Di ba babae, Maria Magdalena at ang mga kasamahan niya? O eh kung i-apply itong verse sa kanila, di dapat hindi sila kikibo? Hindi nila sasabihin na nabuhay na si Jesus? O, kasi maling application. Iko contextualize mo. Ngayon sa mga churches kahit sa ibang lugar, sa ibang panahon, yung mga babae at lalaki man, na daldal, na mahilig mag-intriga, manirang puri, mag maghati-hati sa mga tao, maghasik ng gulo, yan, dapat manahimik din. 
kasi nag a sa kanila kahit hindi sila kurente yan, yung universal truth na yung mga magulo, mapanghati, mapanirang puri, mapagturo ng mali, eh hindi talaga dapat yan pagsalitain. Pero hindi lahat ng babae, lalo kung yung mga babae nagtuturo ng tama, maganda ang kanilang buhay, hindi para sa kanila ang verse na ito. Itong ibig sabihin natin na nakikibasa lang tayo, mag-ingat-ingat, salain kay Jesus bago i-apply sa sariling buhay. Maraming teaching sa scripture, pang kanila lang, huwag makisangkot ang magiging bunga, needless suffering, pagdurusa, paghihirap. Identify teachings as universal for all Jesus followers in all places, times, and context if the teaching will pass the Jesus test. Halimbawa, Matthew 28, 19 Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. O yan, kasali tayo dyan kasi for all nations. Pero yung pang-Korintian lang, kanila lang yun, unless yung teaching mapipigaan mo ng universal teaching for all nations. And in that case, sinasabi natin yung babaeng pinagbawa ng magsalita, pag kami mga babae o lalaki man na ang pagsasalita nila ay hindi nakakaganda, sila yung huwag pagsalitain, huwag bigyan ng speaking engagement, huwag bigyan ng teaching assignments kasi nakakagulo sila. Doon mo yun pwedeng i-apply. Tulad nung itinasabi ni Paul, ang mga babae dapat sa Corinth, mahahaba ang buhok, ang mga lalaki maiiksi. Kasi may cultural meaning sa kanila ang long and short hair. But the short hair of women in Corinth is associated with prostitutes. Hindi ibig sabihin na sa lahat ng bansa, pagka short hair, a prostitute. So pagbabawalan mo na ang mga Christian women in all countries na magkaroon ng short hair, hindi mo dapat i-apply yun sa'yo kasi hindi ka Corinthian at wala ka na sa culture ng Corinth noong araw na ang prostitutes were wearing short hair. Here. Huwag apply ng apply. Identify teachings as contextual. Applicable sa ibang groups and places and times. Depende sa context ng nakikibasa lang na group. Kung ang kok bagay sa kanila makakabuti, hindi eh pwedeng hiramin at i-apply. Just the same sa lain sa Jesus Filter. Adopt and adapt to apply to local and personal context. Hindi pwedeng buong-buo, lululunin, hindi pwedeng all scripture, a-apply mo sa buhay mo, kahit hindi tugma, kahit nakakapagpasungit, kahit nakakapanakit, kahit nakakapagpahirap. Pag-aralan ang ibig sabihin ng all scripture na yon para mapabuti tayo sa pagbabasa ng scripture at hindi mapahamak. God bless us all.